Avram, today we're going to cover a very, very unique and special lesson that for some reason, after all these thousands of years, I never heard the language approached this way before. But as we're new students, we're trying to read Hebrew words. Mm -hmm. And when we get the Hebrew words, they're a conglomeration of, of many, many letters. Unlike English, where the group of letters are a word, Hebrew may have as many as four words grouped together in one word. In other words, four expressions of speech in one word. So how do we know, as new people, as new students, as beginners, begin to decipher what part of the word is the actual main word and which part of the word is prefixes, things that precede the word as a preposition, two or four, as an owner of the word, my or him or her, and which letters come in between letters of the main primary part of the word. So this lesson now is essential for people learning how to read. This very, very essential lesson will help us to be able to break down and identify the words in the structure. To begin with, we have 23 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. Most people say 22, but we'll see why we're going to make shin and sin two separate letters. So that, because they'll be different in what functions they serve. A Hebrew word is made up pretty much, especially verbs, is made of what they call a shorish. It's three root letters that convey a primary meaning. Like if it's resh alav hey, the primary meaning means it has something to do with the eyes and seeing. If it's kaf taf base, it has something to do with writing and letters and inscribing. If it's lamed mem dalad, it has to do with learning and teaching. If it has to be dalad base resh, it has to do with speech. That's called the shorish. The shorish is the primary part of the word. Before the shorish, you can have prefixes, such as a prefix letter meaning and, as a connective, or lamid meaning two or four, or you can have a prefix in the future tense of the verb to tell you I, you, he, she will do something, or you can have an ending after the word to say I, you, he, she did do something in the past. That's all put and combined into one word. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get to the shorish because we want to know the primary meaning of our three root letters. So that's where this comes in handy now. Let's look here. We have four categories of letters. The 23 letters can come in one of four different categories. They can be only root letters. That means the three letters that you're looking at convey the primary meaning of the word. Two. The word, the letter can be either a root letter or it's a prefix. It comes before the root begins. Category three are letters that come at the, as a prefix or a suffix or a root letter. And category four come as a prefix, a suffix, a root, or what we call an infix. These letters can enter in between two root letters. Only these letters, as we'll see in a minute. So let's look now at our categories. 12 out of the 23 letters in the Hebrew language, that's more than half, can only be root letters. So when you see them in a word, you know that you're in the root of the word. You can't use them for anything else. And those letters, the category A here is Gimel Dalet, Zion Chet Tet, Samech Ayin, Fe, Tzadi, Kuf, Resh, and Sin. Not Shin, Sin, can only be root letters. If you see them in a word, you know one thing for sure. I am talking about a root letter that's part of the body of the word that's conveying the essential meaning of the word. Now, second category has four letters in it that of course can be root letters because every letter of the Hebrew alphabet can be a root letter. Twelve can only be root letters, but every one can be a root letter. But second category, besides being a root letter, if it comes at the beginning of the word is a prefix. It can either be a root letter at the beginning of the word or a prefix. You have to see from content and logic. Olive at the beginning of the word is a prefix meaning I will. Every word in the Hebrew language that says I will do something, singular, first person, masculine and feminine, every single verb that begins with olive, it's going to mean I will. Base at the beginning of the word means in or with as a preposition. Lamed at the beginning of the word means two or four, and it's a sign of the infinitive. The infinite form of the word that doesn't have time in it 
It's just the crying like to walk, to run. It's a picture of what's being done. And shin, not the sin. Sin was only one function as a root. Shin now also functions as a prefix, meaning that of which. So Allah, base, Lamed, and Shin. If they're inside a word and there's already been a letter from category A, the root letters, and now you have Allah, base, Lamed, and Shin and after that, it's got to be a root letter. If Allah, base, Lamed, and Shin precedes the other letters in the word, then it can be a prefix or it can be a root letter. Category three. There's five letters in the Hebrew alphabet. Oh, I'm going to add a point. You can see if Allah, base, Lamed, and Shin are not a prefix, then they're a root letter. So that makes now 12 plus 4, 16 of the 23 letters of the Hebrew language are almost inevitably root letters. They are inevitably root letters. So for Allah, base, Lamed, and Shin doesn't have to be the beginning of the word, even though it can be. So 16 of your 23 letters are already considered to be root letters in the Hebrew language, almost without fail, except for those four. The category C, five of the letters of the Hebrew alphabet, He, Kaf, Mem, Nun, and Taf, they can be a root letter, because anything can be a root letter. At the beginning of the word, or at the end of the word, He, Kaf, Mem, Nun, and Taf usually aren't root letters, but they inflect the word. They make it a noun, they make it a verb, they make it feminine, they make it masculine, they make it singular, they make it plural. And finally, you have the last category, which are Vav and Yud. They're like wild cards. They can be a prefix, they can be a suffix at the beginning, at the end, or they can even come in between two root letters to, to inflect the word to give it a special meaning. Or they can be root letters. This part of the learning is essential for a person who wants to start reading to be able to look at a word and say, hey, that letter has to be a root, that letter can be a prefix or a suffix, that letter can be an infix, that letter I, I, I can identify my letters. And now when I look at a word, I'm no longer looking at a word as a, as a complete statement of something. I break it down to its parts. I can pick out my root. I can pick out my suffix. I can pick out my prefix. I can pick out my infix. And I can start reading and consciously identifying and translating words in a knowledgeable way rather than having to guess at being completely lost in this conglomerate of letters which I don't know what they're doing for. So what are these here? Those are the infix letters. Vav and Yud, right? Oh, can do anything. They can be a prefix, they can be a suffix, they can be a root, or they can be an infix. They can come in between root letters and give the root letter a special meaning, right? The, only those two. Nothing else can come in between root letters. That's our first lesson in all of this.